Hi everyone. So last year I released a book called The Authenticity Principle where I explore the experiences of how it is that we can live more of our lives as who we really are. And since releasing the book, I've had a number of South Asian women, Indian women, and actually women from other cultures as well, reach out to me to ask me about how they can live more as their authentic selves, especially in the context of having to face ridiculously high expectations from their parents. And so today I want to talk about how we as Indian daughters need to stop living for our parents and need to start living for ourselves. This is a really tough topic to even talk about in our culture because Indian culture, South Asian culture, we care so desperately about what other people think about us. And in fact, when I say we, our parents in particular, we come from what's called a group focused culture where there's a high commitment to saving face. And I can't even tell you how many times growing up my parents would say something to the effect of what will society think? Like if I had a dollar for every time they said that, I'd be rich right now. And in the context of living in this saving face, um, highly group focused culture, it's been really hard for us to talk openly about the lived experience of what it's actually like to be a woman, to be a daughter, to experience oppressive parenting or to experience violence, abuse, mental health issues, addiction, and more within our society. We don't talk about the truth and the realities. We talk a lot about the good stuff, and we should. We should celebrate our culture, but we should also be able to talk about the challenges, and we don't. So I'd like to be able to do a little bit of that today. But I should also note, for me on a personal level, and I think this is true for a lot of us, one of the other reasons we don't actually speak truth to power in terms of how it can be really hard to be an Indian daughter at times is because, frankly, of the biases that come our way from dominant society about our culture. In other words, because of forms of power, privilege, and supremacy in society, that we are already uh, marginalized by, it's really hard for us to say, yeah, do you know what? As a woman in Indian culture, it can be really hard because at times it is oppressive. Because if we say this, it feeds into existing biases that frankly, we are um, an oppressed, uh, marginalized uh, group of women in a highly misogynist community. Basically, it affirms uh, aspects of white supremacy. And so, for that reason, I haven't up until now really been comfortable speaking about this because I've worried that if I talk about and validate, yes, there are aspects of our culture that are actually quite oppressive, well, it feeds into the biases and the racism and the oppression and the white supremacy we experience. But I am going to put all of that aside today and have the courage to speak boldly on this, even though it's going to be really uncomfortable for me to do it. And I'm sure for Indian parents who watch this video, they're going to be like, WTF, did she really just go there? I'm going to do it. Here's my main message. When we, oh, and let me take a step back quickly. Sometimes people uh, say, well, isn't this the same? Isn't this true for Indian men as well? Yes, it is. What I'm about to say does apply to Indian men, but it is so much more pronounced for women because of the misogyny sexism that we experience in society and in Indian culture on a whole. So my main message today is this, that when we as Indian daughters give our time and energy to meeting the expectations that are ridiculously high of what our parents have for us as it relates to the kind of work we do, who we be friends with, how we speak, what we wear, who we love, who we marry, when we get married, who we can befriend, where we should live, how we should parent, and more. When we put our time and energy towards that and in order to meet our parents' high expectations of us, expectations that actually don't connect and accord with how we really want to live our lives, we take away time and energy from doing our own self-work, from cultivating self-love, and from living as our authentic selves. And in doing so, we prevent ourselves from embracing who we are. But more importantly, because we're not cultivating self-love and because we're not 
able to heal our woundedness and our insecurities and whatever else we have happening, it prevents us from being our best. And by not being our best, we don't attract the best love into our lives. And in fact, try this on for size, and I talk about this in my book as well. When we conform to what it is our parents want us to do and how we should live and more, when we accede to our parents' expectations of us, when they conflict with what it is that we really want, our parents get to decide our happiness. We give them power to, to decide our happiness. And in doing so, we give away our power. Now, I know why we do this, because our parents have been really good to us. My parents deeply love me and did their best in how it is that they raised me. But the problem here is this, we have to live for ourselves. And in fact, one of the biggest challenges that we have in, as Indian daughters in 2018 living our lives is that in our parents' parenting of us, we experienced conditional forms of love, which is to say that when we did what our parents wanted us to do, or more importantly, in this moment, when we continue to do what our parents expect of us, we get love back and we're celebrated and uh, we receive their acceptance. But when we don't listen to them and we don't do what they want us to do, we get reprimanded and love gets taken away. And it's an experience of conditional love. The greatest gift that a parent can give to a child is unconditional love. The ability for us to do what we want, to live out our truth, to be authentic, and still receive their love. That's the greatest gift that a parent can give a child. But a lot of us, because of Indian culture, because of the way our parents parented, we didn't get that. And we now have a lot of woundedness and hurt and pain about who we are. So after today, what I want for you as an Indian daughter, or if uh, as an Indian son or whoever you are who's watching, i really like you to take a step back and think about how it is that you can reclaim your power if you feel the pressure to constantly conform to your parents' high expectations of you that don't accord with how you actually want to live. The greatest gift you can give yourself as an adult now is your own unconditional love, which means accepting who you are, living out who you are as much as possible. And I share this message with you as someone who's now, you'll have heard me say in other videos, I'm now 42 years old. I have really struggled uh, through my life with what to do about my parents' expectations of me. And finally, in my own journey with authenticity over the last 10 years, have drawn boundaries and have learned to say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to live the way I want to live. And I know it's really hard for my parents, but I had to do it for me so that I could live better and be happier. And I finally am. And so my question for you is this. If, what, if my message is resonating with you, how do you want to be living? Where do you want to live? Who do you want to be friends with? How do you want to dress? How do you want to speak? Who do you want to love? Who do you want to be with for your life? Figure out the answers to these questions and then work really hard to cultivate your authenticity in bringing this to be. Even though it will be upsetting for your parents, it'll mean that you get to take back your power and you get to decide what happens to you in your life's happiness. And those are my words for you today. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Leave a comment below, or if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. And of course, if you wanna direct, directly message me, you can find me on any of the social media platforms. Thanks so much.